Another important part of the brake lathe when machining is the integrity of this cutting head. Now, now um, like I said, we've got our arbor right on the money. We've got all of our, our, our cones and our adapters all cleaned up, ready to go. But now I'm gonna check to see if this arbor is in good shape. Now, one of the ways I do that, I extend it as far as I can to get leverage. And I'm gonna pick up on the end and see if there's any play in the assembly itself. I can hear it and I can feel it. Now here's a really neat little tip here what you can do on these Amco brake lays. You can adjust this very easily. You might even have to replace a part. I'm going to show you, I'm going to take this apart and show you what to do if you've got play in this arbor assembly right here. Now here's the nice thing about this Amco brake lathe. I can take this plug out and I'll start taking this plug out to show you but right above the knob here is there's a little brat there's a little plug and if you take that plug all the way out behind that plug we'll have to fish it out with a magnet but behind that plug will be a spring and a bushing that spring is constantly pushing on a bushing and that's what prevents that play that we were getting. So, so you, you have to replace these once in a while, probably every few years, depending on how much you use the brake lathe, but, but these right here should be maintained and replaced. Now, once we replace that, then we'll get rid of that, that rocking that we had here, because with that fixture head moves, that's going to chatter, and I don't care how many silencer bands we put on that rotor, we're going to get some chatter marks on that rotor as we're machining it. So we're going to go ahead and replace that bushing and that spring, put it all back together, and then check it again. So I've put a new bushing and spring in the assembly here. Now we're going to check this and see if the cutting assembly is tight. As you can see, there's no play in the cutting head any longer. So now we can get a nice smooth finish on that rotor when we're machining it. But let's talk about one more thing, the actual cutting bits themselves. Now I've got a couple different bits here that we are that we use in this machine. One is the the old triangle that came with it. Some people like the round bits. Let me say this, you have to have a different fixture for this. So this one's set up right now for the triangle bit. So we're going to go ahead and replace it with the triangle bit here. Now this, this particular brake lathe right here is what they call a negative rake. Uh, you can actually take this little triangle, naturally use all three points, then flip it upside down and use the three points again. On a negative rake, these bits are actually pointed downwards and the brake lathe is going this way. So we can actually flip them over. Now the, the brake lathes that are designed with a positive rake where these are pointed up, then you only get one, three different chances. You cannot flip it upside down. But in this case, so we can actually get six different cutting heads off of one bit. So we're gonna mark these. Sometimes they actually mark it for you with little dots, one, two, and three. This one does not. So we're gonna actually put it in, we're gonna mark it, and then we're gonna keep on rotating it the same way. Then we're gonna flip it and do the other way. So, so we will actually get quite a few cuts out of this one bit right here. But it's so important to get that, that, that uh, rotor finish down to the smoothest possible, because that's what the manufacturer wants for the optimum pad to rotor contact.